Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Hi, I'm Catherine Lowe. I'm from the UC Irvine the Department of Informatics. Um, and I study collective action uh, towards common goals or social good um, across and beyond major social media sites. And when I say major social media sites, I'm talking about like Facebook and Twitter. Um, and in, in part because uh, I study Reddit uh, a lot of the time, and a lot of people actually dismiss Reddit as not being like a serious social media. Uh, medium. And so um, I also work with Intel on their diversity and technology initiatives, specifically on games, and I moderate a bunch of subreddits. And so um, the subreddit that's kind of most relevant in the situation is one called Girl Gamers. It's a subreddit where um, a bunch of women come to talk about games and everything. Um, and in fact, actually, I want to preface and say if you don't know what Reddit is, uh, <laughs> it's an entertainment. Uh, social networking and news website where registered community members can submit content like text posts or direct links, uh, making it like an online bulletin board system. It aggregates news and things like that. Um, and this is what a, the front page looks like, and it's what your typical Reddit experience looks like. And this is what uh, Girl Gamers, the specific subreddit, um, because Reddit has its own sub communities called subreddits. Uh, and so. This uh, started a few years ago. I started, uh, I think, six years ago, uh, in part because I went on Reddit and I said, oh, hey, like, are there any good forums for women to talk about games? And they said, how dare you? Like, oh, that's, that's disgusting. Like, oh, you, like, you, like, you're doing reverse segregation. Like, that's oh, awful. So, uh, of course, they made an even worse decision and made a subreddit <laughs> for girl gamers. Um, and so um, we, it's, kind of relevant, or Girl Gamers is kind of relevant for harassment because women are harassed online, as we've sort of seen very clearly, and especially in the game space because of a phenomenon called Gamergate. Um, and what also makes being on Reddit, uh, having a community on Reddit, uh, 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 a problem is because uh, Gamergate used uh, Reddit as a staging ground uh, on a subreddit called Kotaku in Action. And so because uh, Reddit is a very porous as a community. It's very easy to go from subreddit to subreddit. We often faced uh, sort of brigades, like so people would flood our own subreddit. We'd fa we'd face thousands and thousands of people coming to um, our subreddit saying like, oh, uh, uh, lots of awful things, uh, sort of in line with what you've seen in the previous presentations. And so, um, like, how would we deal with this as moderators? Um, like. When Gamergate happened, we would actually be, we had a team of moderators around the clock, just sort of there and available. Um, and then when something happened, we would actually have to sort of call in the troops and say like, okay, there's thousands of people of po like people posting, so we have to have all of us there removing posts. And it actually was largely opaque to the users, the community members, uh, what was going on. Um, and so Reddit, I think because it wasn't necessarily a place of um, productive, uh, critical uh, scrutiny uh, necessarily for a while. Like people either would write off Reddit as not being a serious social media, or they would uh, sort of say like, oh, well, there's no hope for it. So, you know, maybe we don't even need to um, put in these sort of moderating tools for harassment. Um, because of that, the moderators of our subreddit, we had to come up with our own sort of ad hoc ways of dealing with harassment. So this is a one strange one that we did. Uh, in fact, I kind of want you to see it in its full glory. Uh, basically, what happened here, oops, what happened here is, um, wait, oh yeah, no, but um, yeah, what happened here is that uh, if somebody would link to a post on our subreddit, um, then everybody could go flood and like say like do horrible harassing things like say a lot of awful comments So one of our moderators coded a system where it just made complete nonsense And so everybody who would go click on that link to go harass our community would see this and there's nothing they could do um, and Oops So oh wait, is there a way for Oops yeah. So, um, oh wait, the right here. Yeah. Um, 
does it go up there? Yeah, so this is actually what it looks like. It's actually animated and very, very difficult to uh, use. Um, and we've actually been commended by other communities for having a great uh, system of deterring harassers and brigaders. Um, and this, there's nothing like this on Reddit as a formal tool. Um, and, in, and in fact, there's some ways we prefer that because um, people haven't sort of gamed ways to get around it yet uh, that much. Oh, yeah, so back to that. <laughs> um, and so then uh, what's interesting though is that while Gamergate was an awful thing and like this really um, significant amount of harassment was really terrible, the issues that uh, ended up being uh, most salient to me were actually these longer term problems, which is finding an accessible and safe way for women to find people to play video games with um, beyond their immediate social circles. So Gamergate was sort of had moments of crisis and um, affected us in very significant ways, but we found out our problem was here. Um, because how can you find people to play video games with without unwanted attention, without harassment, um, in a way that is scalable and didn't require excessive labor from the moderators? And so this is a really difficult problem, and we tried a lot of different things. And so, like you can see up here, uh, first we, had the, we tried the subreddit itself. People would post, I want a gaming buddy. Um, and p theoretically, everybody would reply to that post saying, hey, I want a game with you, it'll be great. It turns out that um, because it's very easy to make a Reddit account, um, you can make a random account, uh, post and say, hey, I want a game with you, and then you can harass that person. Um, and there's no way we can find out about it. Um, and it's actually not very public because you can private message them. So we thought, okay, uh, let's go somewhere else. We had an IRC channel. Uh, for girl gamers, and so it's like, at least we're all in the moment there. But then um, we had the uh, obstacles of like, well, you always have to have moderators like standing by. Um, it's not necessarily very scalable, like text goes by very quickly. We used a Facebook page. Um, people didn't engage with the page very well, so we used a Facebook group. And what we did in that case was we only allowed um, self-identifying women to join the Facebook group because that was sort of our easy solution. And um, the problem with that, though, was not only did it take incredible labor from the moderators, um, it was also um, uh, not trans-inclusive. Like, for people who wanted to compartmentalize um, and uh, didn't want to link up their gaming identities or their Reddit identities with their Facebook account, they couldn't join this group. Um, <laughs> Then we had a Steam group. Uh, Steam is a uh, gaming platform uh, where you have online communities for gaming. Um, that was similarly hard to regulate because it's very easy to make an account and it's hard to account for um, harassing private messages and all that. So finally, we have uh, a recent system which is Discord and it's like a Slack channel but with uh, voice chat. Um, and it's been working all right. We don't know if it's scalable yet, it's very new. Um, and so it turns out we didn't just abandon each one of these, we continued using every single one of these systems and it's, it's really difficult to keep track of them all. There's a team of like five moderators um, and it's very difficult to get people to volunteer labor to maintain these kinds of websites and nobody's gonna pay you to do this. So, that's what we're doing right now, and that's sort of our ad hoc solution. And actually what's really unsatisfying is that um, despite hundreds and hundreds of women managing to find communities and gaming partners like without harassment through this system, um, there are hundreds more who ended up trying to use the system safely and then getting harassed, getting awful messages from people and, and, and it being inescapable to the point that it was very traumatic for um, a lot of our community members. And so it, it feels a little hopeless, but at the same time, we found that our subreddit community had a lot of value for people in the sense that um, the, these are three posts that happened in the past week. Uh, somebody said, I'm looking for some support, guidance, IDK, general warm welcome, advice, and like you see like it got voted up a bit and like there's a 56 comments of support there. Um, then somebody said, it's impossible to play Counter-Strike as a girl, like, because you get harassed. Uh, it happens way too often, but if you mention it in the main uh, Reddit community for Counter-Strike, you get downvoted and harassed a lot. Um, and then there is a very, very popular post on 
uh, women harassing each other in the community. Um, and so it turns out that uh, this formalized space was really, really valuable for people. And I think um, while we often want to design sort of all encompassing tools that will prevent harassment from happening in the first place, um, there's, I think, a lot of value in formal spaces for venting, social emotional support, um, and for sharing and developing strategies to combat harassment. Because harassment always sort of evolves. People find ways to sort of game the systems as they exist. And um, they also find ways to harass people across communities that aren't Facebook and Twitter. Things that are Reddit, uh, these smaller communities, like, I don't know, even on Slack, on IRC, um, and, and uh, I guess on Steam. And there, there's so many platforms. And a lot of the heuristics and solutions that we come up with don't apply universally across all of these different platforms. Um, and so this is a great post that's a good example. It's somebody who said, do you stream? And they talked about, um, like, I just tried streaming on Twitch. Twitch is a, a video streaming service uh, where you, you play games and you stream it out to an audience. Um, and they said that they got like harassed a lot and they're feeling pretty discouraged and asked for tips. People flooded in and gave a ton of tips, like very personal. And, and this is what they said at the end. They said, you guys have restored my faith in humanity. I'm definitely gonna try my hand at streaming again with your advice. And they like went back to streaming. There is no support system on Twitch or like anything for um, women who stream on Twitch who face a lot of harassment. Um, there's no place. And so a couple of them go to sub the subreddit and find it. And it's a completely different platform. So we've managed to have some successes, but like I said before, like there are a lot of obstacles. Um, and so part of it is the invis invisibility of those who are harassed. Uh, those who get these private messages don't actually talk about them or tell the moderators about them, so we have to like go digging to find out about it. Um, and there are wildly varying and occasionally mutually exclusive or seemingly mutually exclusive needs, like synonymity versus safety. And so we actually see, I attempted to get feedback uh, in this community, and so we had these very, very different experiences. One is like, oh, I've only had good experiences, and then somebody said a lot of creepy guys on here, um, which you know happens when you're on Reddit. Um, so what are the design implications? Um, this is a little bit speculative, um, and this is sort of what I think of uh, given my experiences with Girl Gamers, and participatory design I think is really great um, in the sense that um, as researchers and designers, we don't necessarily have a lot of time to delve into these communities, so we can trust the community members and, and give them agency in the design process um, beyond just interviewing them and also participating in their communities. Um, enabling flexible heuristics and ad hoc, ad hoc solutions. As you could see, we had a lot of ad hoc solutions that ended up being really, really helpful. And understanding that it's an assemblage of systems, uh, often for people to deal with online harassment, in addition to the all-encompassing solutions that we use on major social media. And finally, I think it's really important to under better understand people's lives across online spaces. They don't simply exist in these discrete spaces of Twitter and Facebook. They have lives across all of them. Yeah, and so then we're going to have a breakout session. Oh. <laughs> a breakout session um, about design processes and methods.